Fresh from Health and Wellness, today we're going to talk about how to brew healthier coffee. We spent about $2,000 on equipment and beans, plus countless weeks researching how to make the perfect healthy cup of coffee. There's really a lot of health benefits to coffee that we've just found out that are actually proven in science, empirical data now. Here's what we found. A few decades ago, several flawed medical studies told us, don't drink coffee, it's bad for you, it's going to kill you. That's since been quashed and debunked, and a host of new studies show just the opposite. A cup or two of joe each day may actually save or lengthen your life. So what's the deal with the Joe thing? Where did Cup of Joe come from? Well, the story goes in 1914, then Secretary of the Navy Josephus Daniels, remember that name, Josephus, banned alcohol from his ship. So sailors kind of rebelled and they began drinking coffee instead, calling it Cups of Joe. Get it to try to poke fun at Josephus. So the name kind of stuck and we got a Cup of Joe from there. Or there's another theory that says that Joe is the simplified form of the word jamok, which began as a nickname for coffee in the 1800s, combining the words java and mocha, java mocha, jamok. So it was shortened over the years and it became Cup of Joe. There are some other theories as well, and uh, the truth is no one's really quite sure where it officially came from, but that's how we know it today, a Cup of Joe. So everybody knows coffee has caffeine, a necessary stimulant for millions of people worldwide, including me. But it's also high in antioxidants and also a source of vitamin B2, magnesium, and super helpful polyphenols, believe it or not. There's a lot more than just caffeine. But beware, a journal of marketing study finds that drinking a caffeinated beverage before shopping could lead to buying more, they call them high hedonic products, such as scented candles or fragrances. So it's thought that caffeine might heighten your senses and especially your smell, your olfactory senses. So I guess the best practice is don't drink coffee before heading into Bath and Body Works, unless of course you've brought the SUV. And we've got another coffee health surprise. According to Johns Hopkins Medicine, coffee potentially has these other nine exciting health benefits as well. Number one, recent studies found that coffee drinkers are less likely to die from some of the leading causes of death, including coronary heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and kidney disease. Two, Coffee drinkers may process sugar a little bit better than the rest of us. Studies found that people who drink more coffee are less likely to get type 2 diabetes. 3. Drinking 1 to 2 cups of coffee a day may help ward off heart failure. That's where a weakened heart has difficulty providing blood to enough blood to your parts of your body. 4. Coffee drinkers are less likely to develop Parkinson's disease. Also, caffeine may also help those with the condition better control their movements. That's really interesting. Five, we're not quite sure why, but coffee seems to have a protective effect on your liver. Six, dark roast coffee, which is a little less acidic, seems to decrease breakage in DNA strands. DNA breakage can lead to cancer or tumors. Seven, Decaf or regular coffee drinkers were 26% less likely to develop colorectal cancer. Eight, the caffeine in two cups of coffee may provide significant protection against developing Alzheimer's disease. Research found that women aged 65 or older who drank two to three cups of coffee a day were less likely to develop dementia in general. And finally, for women drinking at least one cup of coffee a day, well, it's associated with a lower stroke risk, which is the fourth leading cause of death. So there's some interesting health benefits. It's great news, right? Well, the bad news is that it's really difficult to find this magical cup of coffee, coffee that's not tainted with pesticides, uh, bisphenol S, the BPS, or both which would pretty much wipe out all of those healthy benefits and maybe make it worse. And if you think of spending upwards of six to eight bucks a day at your trendy little coffee shop, 
what you thought was super healthy coffee, which is probably loaded with processed sugar, you think that has you covered, right? Well, you might be wrong. And I've recently learned that many of these coffee shops might be taking your money and serving you a grotesquely unhealthy cup of pesticides topped with uh, microplastics. But we'll talk about that more in a bit. First, let's chat about the coffee itself, which unfortunately is problem number one. Coffee is one of the most widely traded commodities in the world. With over 12 billion pounds of it's billion pounds of coffee produced annually. Now, coffee beans are the seeds of actually a fruit called a coffee cherry. Coffee cherries grow on a wide variety of species of coffee plants, ranging from bushes right here in Florida to coffee trees. So there are two main types of coffee species. There's Arabica and Robusta. Arabica, the most popular coffee, originates from Ethiopia and produces, I guess, a more mild, flavorful tasting coffee. However, it's a little pricey because it's finicky. The plant has a hard time deciding if it wants to grow and it's a little more expensive to grow. Now, the Robusta coffee or Robusta is more resistant to disease and can withstand more changes in climate, less rainfall, different temperatures. So it's going to do a little bit better. Coffee beans are then roasted at a high heat to produce a chemical change that releases the rich aroma and flavor that we associate with coffee. And these are the beans here. They do smell great. Roasting levels range from light to medium to dark. The lighter the roast, the lighter the color and roasted flavor. And also the lighter it is, the higher its acidity. Dark roasts produce a black bean with little acidity, but slightly more like a slightly more bitter roasted flavor. And then it's ground up into tiny little pieces. A medium grind is the most common and used for most coffee makers. A fine grind, really, really small, almost powdery, is used for deeper flavors when you're making things like espresso, which releases more oils. Uh-oh, more on this later. Coarse grind may be used in some coffee presses. Now, how about decaffeinated coffee? That's an option for people who are sensitive to caffeine. Now, to remove caffeine, producers use like a chemical process using solvents which bind to caffeine. And then both the caffeine and the solvents hopefully evaporate when the beans are rinsed and dried. At least 97 of the 97 percent of the caffeine must be removed to carry the decaffeinated label here in the state. So there might be a little bit of caffeine left. So just be aware of that. Some of the naturally occurring chemicals in coffee beans that affect the flavor and scent may also be destroyed during the decaffeination process. So everything sounds great, right? Well, here's the rub. Most of the big name commercial coffee is imported into the United States and there's little to no oversight or regulation on how much residual pesticides are permitted when the beans are imported and sold. So this leaves you, the innocent coffee drinker, vulnerable to many potentially dangerous chemicals and substances, including some chemicals banned from use in American uh, agriculture. That's a little frightening, isn't it? In 2016, the world of organic agriculture reported that over 90% of all processed non-organic coffee beans are heavily treated with pesticides. Now, Brazil, the world's leading coffee growing region, has increased pesticide usage almost 800% from levels reported in 1990. So it's only going to go up from there. However, in certified organic coffees, there are no synthetic fertilizers or chemicals used in growing or production, which means you're going to get cleaner coffee beans, cleaner coffee, and also cleaner air, land, and water. The coffee is grown only with organic fertilizers, things like coffee pulp or chicken poo or compost. I know gross, but better than potentially dangerous chemicals most of us, including me, can't even pronounce. Listen, if your coffee ain't certified organic, you might be ingesting residual traces of some pretty nasty stuff. Personally, I'm a big fan of what they're doing at Purity Coffee. It's great tasting certified organic coffee with enhanced antioxidants for health and they're environmentally conscious too. We are an affiliate, but it's great stuff and I don't push anything I don't believe in. All right, let's talk about plastic. Most food grade plastic is now BPA free, but 
BPS, its replacement, might actually be worse. Our journey uncovered that most of the popular coffee makers all use plastic that comes into contact with your hot water at some point. And a basic scientific principle is that he's, heat can cause expansion, which then can allow things to melt at certain temperatures. As a matter of fact, many plastics can leach chemicals, dangerous chemicals at room temperatures, like in some brands of bottled water. I know sharing is caring, but not in this case. Any water and plastics aren't a good mix together for rule of thumb. Well, so what you're thinking? Everything's BPA free now, so it's all good, right? That's a problem, ladies and gentlemen, that's wrong. Uh, recently, and actually it was accidentally found and proven that bisphenol S, like its predecessor, bisphenol A, also leaches endocrine disrupting molecules into water. And some studies are saying now that BPS leaching and its effects might even be worse than BPA. So in case you need a refresher, here are some of the really nasty things BPA or BPS can do to your body. High blood pressure. It can cause ovarian cysts and infertility. It can cause endocrine disorders. It can cause type 2 diabetes and also certain types of cancer. Now, speaking of water, always filter it yourself. Bottled water may have traces of BPS in it from the plastic. And some tap water is downright dangerous in some places. We, well, any good cup of coffee is going to, or a cup of joe is going to begin with a clean cup of water. We use either reverse osmosis, a zero water filter, or water drop filters, depending on where we are and what we have access to at that time. So with all these potential problems, how in heavens are you supposed to make a healthy cup of organic coffee to take advantage of all these health benefits? Well, here are some of the more popular ways and the pros and cons of each. Now, this is a French press. Now, most French presses are made from glass and stainless steel, so that's great. No problem with plastic there. That's awesome, no exposure. Check. And you've got certified organic beans now, so that's great too. So you're in control. You can make it as hot or as strong as you like. All you do is out, add your ground organic coffee beans to the French press and then add some boiling or hot water, wait a few minutes, and then press down for a super fresh tasting cup of coffee. You're in the game, right? Which leads us to yet another problem. Cafestrol. Now this stuff, the problem with this French press coffee makers is there's no filter to absorb the coffee oils that are extracted during heating. Now, coffee oils are most potent in coffees where the grounds have the longest contact with the water during brewing, which is why espresso might be terrible for some people. Think about it for a second. Water spends a lot of quality time with coffee grinds in a French press resulting in greater concentrations of cafestrol. And that's a chemical found in coffee oils that has been found to decrease bile acids and neutral sterols in your body, which potentially reduces your body's ability to metabolize and regulate cholesterol, therefore elevating that. So keep that in mind. How about electric coffee makers? Everybody's got one of these. Brewing in a typical electric coffee pot where the filter has relatively low levels of cafestrol. So that's good because the water zips through the grinds quickly and most of the cafestrol is caught in the filter. So that's good. However, you'll have to worry about the leaching of plastic from the heated plastic water storage containers and the filter basket. So to me, that's a big no, unfortunately. How about a mocha pot? Why not be like our very stylish European bros and simply brew up a fresh cup of coffee right on your stovetop with this little mocha pot? Oh, Antonio, would you love a hot espresso? I'd be like, no, bro. You simply fill half of the pot with boiling water and add fresh coffee grinds to the filter basket on top and set it over heat. That's all you gotta do. These two things unscrew, pretty easy to do, right? So this works by using the pressure from the boiling water to push the coffee into the chamber of the mocha pot. Science, right? Pressure. So I, I had one, I used to use one of these. And although most mocha pots are for espresso, you can make coffee with them by just diluting the mixture a little bit. Most of these, including this one, are made of aluminum. 
and I understand there may be reasons, we're not sure yet, to be concerned about aluminum leaching into your water. The jury is still out on the potential problems with the connection between aluminum and Alzheimer's. So personally, I'm going to put my uh, mocha pot down here and I'm not going to ingest any more aluminum than I already do. Plus, there's no filter for the cathestrol. So that's a double whammy. Next, please. Remember back in the 70s when every mom had a percolator on a kitchen counter? No, neither do I. I'm not old enough to remember that. But the percolator works much the same way like a French press works, except there's no pressing involved. Why is that different? I don't know. My Coletti Bozeman percolator uses no electricity, so it's real nice. You put it on the stove or an open fire. There's no plastic, and it uses paper filters. And the company's run by American veterans, so I thought that's pretty cool. So I thought, I got a percolator by this uh, Coletti company. I thought all my problems were solved. But then again, the water spends a lot of time rolling through those coffee grinds in here, leaching more cafestol and whatever else from those non-organic beans. So I'm using organic beans, so that's a win, right? I'm hoping the filter in here was strong enough to capture all the cafestol, but I still had my concerns. Also, the pot has to be super hot before the percolation begins. And uh, you have to do a minimum amount in this particular one before it starts percolating. You have to take, you take account of evaporation and timing and your coffee tapes always seems to be a surprise. I couldn't get the mixture right. A lot of people do. And if you can do that, that's awesome. And you better enjoy roughing it because there's somehow there always ends up with some grinds in your cup. All right, so the latest fad is the pour over coffee. And this is a simple method where you pour bo boiling water into a glass container like this from Chemex over medium fine ground coffee beans. And wait, there's actually filters with this too. So you have to boil your water first and then slowly pour it around in the filter on your coffee grinds in circles to get the best taste. And it really works and it's kind of an art and you need to figure out how to do that. So thankfully, the filters are pretty thick and they absorb most of the cafestrol. So that you can control the strength of your coffee by how much how many grinds you desi decide to use and how much water you decide to pour in there. So I've got it down to a science pretty much. So I personally have decided to stick with the pour over method. I'm using my Chemex pour over system, all glass, no plastic in here, and it works really well. Now what about instant coffee you might ask? Well, instant coffee is made by actually brewing coffee and then vaporizing it or freeze drying it, which removes all the water from the liquid, leaving crystals or some kind of powder. A potential downside of instant coffee is that it can contain twice as much of another chemical called acrylamide. It's a potential, I'm not sure I mean saying that right, a potentially harmful yuck that forms when coffee beans are roasted. And it has the potential to damage your nervous system and increase the risk of cancer if high levels are consumed. So good news is the amount of acrylamide in most instant coffee is below the amount shown to be harmful in study. So that's a good thing. So you may be okay with your instant coffee, but stick to the organic as well. Now there is a little bit less caffeine in instant coffee than regular coffee, where one cup of instant has between 30 and 90 milligrams of caffeine, depending on your brand, compared to regular coffee, which contains somewhere between 70 and 140 milligrams of caffeine. If you need the convenience, and a lot of people do need the convenience of instant, they're in a hurry, they have limited space, Anthony's Organic is a great choice for instant coffee. So let's recap our search for the healthiest cup of coffee on earth. Number one, we're going to do organic coffee only. Avoid the pesticides, get more nutrients. Number two, use filtered water. Number three, your hot water shouldn't ever touch any kind of plastic. And number four, a paper filter should remove most of the potentially bad cathestrol. That's it. You're all set. You're ready to take advantage of all the health benefits coffee can offer to you and hopefully live 100 more years. We can't guarantee that, but you never know. Listen, enjoy your coffee. We'll see you all soon. My name is Fresh. Please hit that like button and subscribe and tell your friends about this too because you want them to stick around a little longer too. Life is better with friends. Thank you.